Today is Saturday, the 10th of June, 2023, and we are all gathered here for the 85th session on Mindfulness for Beginners in the English Medium. And we have with us uh, Venerable Bhante Homa Gumudhamma Kusulateru participating in today's program. Um, and I would like to welcome Bhante with much respect on behalf of all of us joining through Zoom and also through the live stream over the uh, Satipasala Foundation's uh, Facebook uh, uh, live stream. And uh, our program agenda will uh, run up as uh, starting with in-session mindfulness, and then there will be a talk on mindfulness, uh, followed by a presentation of uh, questions and reports to, uh, provided for today's program by the, uh, by the audience, uh, members in the audience, and then uh, Bhante will uh, provide us with uh, responses and valued insights uh, based on those questions and answers. And you will always also have a chance to raise a verbal question or two dependent on uh, time availability towards the end of the program. So with that, I would like to uh, uh, invite Bhante uh, to commence uh, the in-session uh, mindfulness uh, practice for today's session. Over to Bhante. Much merits. Thanks, Namanta. Hello, everybody. Uh, let's start today's session with a mindful sitting practice. So all of you can adjust your posture. Uh, make sure that you are seated comfortably. If you feel like it, you can turn on the video and join more actively. So you are seated in a comfortable manner and you have your eyes closed. Now let's try and pay attention to the present moment to notice what we feel. You try to be attentive and notice what are the things that grab your attention. You just have to keep your mind open, attentive in the present moment. Notice what's pop up in your field of awareness. There could be sounds Sounds appear in your field of awareness. Sometimes various bodily sensations. Time to time thought, memories, future planning. Be attentive. And simply just notice. You don't have to worry about these things. You don't have to control. Just allow them to naturally come and go. As a group, let's try to practice this simple awareness for a few more minutes.
Okay, everyone, now you can open your eyes again. So that's about 15 minutes of mindful sitting, just to give you an idea about the practice. With that, Namantha, you can take over. Thank you very much, Felix Bhante. Uh, so next, uh, we have the talk on mindfulness, and the topic uh, is uh, unborn. And I would like to invite Bhante with much respect uh, to commence the talk for today. Over to Bhante. Much respect again. Okay, everyone. I think uh, we can take some time to explain today's topic and probably discuss how this topic is uh, related to the practice, the mindfulness practice that we are doing. So this is a uh, strange topic. Maybe for some of you, this might sound strange. So we will try and see what what what's the idea behind the unborn and how we can relate it to our practice, the mindfulness practice that we are doing. Now, before explaining about the unborn, we have to start our discussion about the bone. Now, most of us, we know the bone condition. We have experienced the bone condition. Before we go into the unborn, it is important that we talk about the bone condition. What are the things that are born and what's the nature of the things that are born? Right? So let's think about the born things. Let's take our body, for example. When we take our body, that born body is subjected to aging then finally this body will die. So this is the nature of the born things. Whenever something is born, it is subjected to decaying, aging. And towards the end of this cycle, it will die. Right? So when we experience born things, Although we want to uh, keep them forever, although we want to hold on to them, the born things, they have their own nature. They follow their own nature. So when we deal with the born things, it is natural that we experience friction. It is natural that we resist this uh, nature of the born things. Now, for example, let's say aging. If you are in your middle age, then you know how much resistance is there about the aging. Right? You want to prevent it. You want to postpone it. Little by little, the things on your body maybe gray hair appear and when that appears you try to resist it when the sickness come to your body you try to resist it when you start feeling various pains, aches you try to tell other people that you are still young then you can function very well. So what we are doing, in a way, we are do resisting the aging process. We are resisting the process that is natural to born things. And let's say when it is time, when the body is dying, then we make a huge fuss about it. If you are the person who is dying, you try to struggle so much, try to somehow stay forever, try to get various treatments, but still, at the end of the day, 
you have to accept that fate. So this is how the born things are. And even the surrounding people, your family members, your friends, they too try to resist this. They too try to protest against the dying. They do take you to hospital and try to somehow save your life. But although you can try various methods, when the time is right, you have to go. You have to give up all the things and somehow accept that faith that came to you. Right? So, in a way, this is the nature of the born things. They are subjected to aging and they die. Change, basically, change if they are, then dying is also a part of the change. Now, there, that, that's an example. Our body, one of the born things. Then only the physical things, no. Even the various ideas, your plans, hopes, they too are born things. You plan a lot. You want to build this business or you, you want to support your children in a way. You want to bring, that, bring them up in a certain way. So these things are also born things. And when certain things happen, you realize how much resistance is there within you trying to fight this. You had a plan, but that plan didn't work out. You had expectations, but they were not met. So you resist. That too is the aging process or the change. And at the end of the day, you have to give up on your plans. You have to give up certain ideas, certain expectations. So this is the nature of the born things, whether it could be materialistic things, physical things, whether it could be ideas, hopes, plans, all the things are born things. The nature of them, they are born, they are subjected to change, and at the end of the day, they die. That is what's happening. Now, even uh, let's say a relationship, when you are in an early stage, when you are going through the honeymoon phase of the relationship, you are probably you feel like you are in cloud nine. Whenever you see that person, you feel this happiness. You feel the uh, blood rushing through your veins. You feel this energy. Probably it will last few months, few years. Then things become normal. You meet. No such excitement is there. But the time goes on. And let's say you get married. Again, you feel that high for a while. Few months, few years, you feel that high, that honeymoon phase is there. But when the time flies by, when the time goes by, within few years, probably within a decade, you are sick of this person. And you struggle so much within you, trying to fight this change. Or you struggle to accept this change. And at the end of the day, this relationship might die. They might leave you. They might divorce you. Or maybe due to some other condition, uh, you, you, you don't get to meet that person again. So when such things happen, how much we struggle? How much we resist? 
So this is the nature of the born things. When something is born, it is subjected to change. And at the end of the day, it will die. So we all experience these born things again and again. Time after time, we experience them. Time after time, we resist them. Trying after time after time, we try to fight against their nature. So when we talk about the unborn, first we have to talk about the born things. We have already experienced the born things. Then we say, when we come to the practice, we say, you must experience the unborn within. That's a quote from Banke, in the Zen master. He's saying you must see the unborn within. You must experience the unborn within. Now, one might ask how to experience this unborn within me. Right? So, it is really difficult to explain. The unborn, you have to experience. That's the best way to know the unborn. That's the best way to understand the unborn. It is experiential than explained. Right? So, let's say if you are interested in the practice, if you are interested in seeing or experiencing this unborn within you, then what is the practice? Then there's a term in Zen Buddhism, that term is Shikantaga. They say just sitting, just walking. That translate something similar to like bear attention. You have their attention. You just walk in a comfortable manner and be attentive. You just sit in a comfortable manner and be attentive. That's all you have to do. Pay attention to the present moment. Keep your mind open. That's all you have to do. Right? So it says that you can't get this wrong. Why? Let's say if I tell you to observe your breath, then some of you might come and say, I can't observe my breath. Why? I don't feel my breath. Oh, I get so many thoughts, they distract me, and I can't keep my attention with the breath. Okay, can you be attentive? Not attention about the breath. Can you just maintain their attention? Can you just sit? Can you just walk? That you can't get it wrong. So that's the idea of this bare attention. That's the idea of just sitting, just walking. You can't get it wrong. If I tell you to concentrate your mind on a single object, then you might come and complain. If I tell you to develop samadhi, then you might come and complain. If I tell you to develop some other thing, you might come and complain. But just being attentive, you can't get it wrong. So that's the gateway towards seeing the unborn. You just walk in a comfortable manner and be attentive. We just sit in a comfortable manner and be attentive. That you try to practice, not just once. Some people, they just sit for five minutes and they say, okay, I have seen the unborn and they wake up. Right? So some practitioners are like that. But it's not how it works. You have to sustain this practice within you. You have to establish it. Gradually, you have to develop it. That's how it will grow. So every day, take 30-40 minutes. Just simply walk in a comfortable manner and pay attention. Pay attention about the walking. Pay attention about the sitting. Daily 30-40 minutes of walking, 30-40 minutes of sitting that you do. That's the approach you have to take. 
towards the practice. Probably I would recommend early in the morning, 30-40 minutes of sitting. Sitting on a cushion and just sinking in. That's a good way to start your day. So you might have various other things. If you are interested, if you think it is important, you can get up a bit earlier and try to practice this way. Every day, 30-40 minutes of sitting, that's how you start your day. Then probably before bed, before bed you can take some time, get away from all the devices, get away from all the bright lights and probably you can walk for 30-40 minutes even inside your room you can walk for a while that way you do mindful walking we are attention while walking just walking we can sit right so you don't have to do much during this time it's more about not doing rather to doing. Many people, they go to meditation with this doing attitude. They want to do something. They want to attain something. That very intention will kill their meditation. They will create more stress through the meditation. You know, you are already stressful. You don't need more of, more of it, right? In your day-to-day -day life, you are already stressed. You already feel that you can't bear this. So I practice and create additional stress. That's not necessary. Instead, you simply sit in a comfortable manner. Just be attentive that you are sitting. If you think that is stressful, uh, then it's not right. There's some issue or something wrong with the practice that you are doing. Otherwise, just sitting, you can stay without doing much for a while. Then that is so relaxing. Your body and mind, both of them, they relax. And even while walking, you don't do much. You walk for the sake of walking. And while walking, be comfortable and simply be aware about the present moment. Just walking, they say. So the important is that you can't get this wrong. You can't get this wrong. Somebody can, uh, can't come and say that I can't, can't do this. I did something wrong. There's nothing wrong in it. You simply have to pay attention, be attentive. So that's what we did today. We didn't talk about the breath. We didn't talk about the stomach. We didn't talk about the paying attention to the body. No. Instead, we said, simply sit for a while, be comfortable, close your eyes and pay attention. That is the bare attention that we are talking about. That is the idea behind shikantaza or just sitting, right? So when you do this, you realize various things. They appear in your field of awareness. Now, even during today's practice, you noticed it. If you have practiced today, you might notice various sounds, a variety of sounds. They appeared in your field of awareness. A variety of bodily sensations, they appear in your field of awareness. Thoughts, memories, planning, ideas, they appear in your field of awareness. Various emotions, and they appear in your field of awareness. So experiencing this is very important. First, you have to see the born nature within. This is the root of the born nature. When a sound appears in your field of awareness, that is something born. 
when a memory, when a thought appears in your field of awareness, that is something born. When a bodily sensation appears in your field of awareness, that is something born. So that's the root of the born nature within you. Whatever that's born, it came out of this. This is the very root of born nature that you have. Let it be your body. Let it be your materialistic things. Let it be your family or friends. Let it be your ideas, concepts, expectations. Whatever that you have, they came from this very root. This very born nature within you. So first you have to experience the born nature within you. That's why we say pay attention, notice what happens. Notice what is appearing in your field of awareness. Then you come and say, okay, I notice the sounds appear in my field of awareness. Okay, I notice the breath appears in my field of awareness. Okay, I notice various bodily sensations appear in my field of awareness. Okay, I notice thoughts, memories appear in my field of awareness. So that's the starting point of the practice. You see the born nature within you. You see how the variety of sounds are born in my field of awareness. How there are thoughts, memories born in my field of awareness. How there are various bodily sensations born in my field of awareness. So that's the starting point of the practice. Then the teacher might say, okay, good that you have noticed the born nature within you. Good that you have noticed the sounds appear in your field of awareness. Good that you have noticed the thoughts appear in your field of awareness. Good that you have noticed the bodily sensations appear in your field of awareness. That's a very good starting point. Then the teacher might say, Okay, keep on observing. Again and again, notice the things that are appearing. Again and again, notice the breath that is appearing. Again and again, notice the thoughts that are appearing. Again and again, notice the various bodily sensations that are appearing. So in a way, the teacher might advise you to observe these things to observe these born things within you. And without any judgment, you observe. You don't have to judge anything. You don't have to sort anything. You don't have to tell that this is good, this is bad. That is not necessary. Just simply keep an open mind and keep on observing these born things within you. When you observe it, what is happening? Usually, the, the people tell, I observed my breath. Initially, I couldn't feel, but with time, I could feel the difference between the in-breath and the out-breath. So still, they are in the born nature. Then they say, when I keep on observing the breath, I could feel that there is a gap in between the in-breath and the out-breath. Right? So earlier you didn't even notice the breath. With time you started to notice the breath. Then they say, okay, I could feel that there is a gap in between the in-breath and the out-breath. Then they come and say, when I keep on observing, I could feel the gap is in increasing. The breath is becoming shorter and the gap is increasing. And at the end of the day, they might come and say, the breath disappears, only the gap remains. Right? So we have heard it in so many meditation reports. It's not something new to us. So what happened? You got this born thing. And you were advised to observe it. 
time after time. You are advised to observe it again and again. When you keep on observing this born thing, naturally your mind will slip into the unborn. That's why you say, I could feel the gap in between the in-breath versus the out-breath. I could feel that gap is increasing. I could feel that the breath disappeared and the gap remains. So this is one example I took. Your breath. Let's say we, we have this singing bowl. We tell people, okay, I'm going to ring this singing bowl. You have to attentively listen. Close your eyes, pay attention to the singing bowl and listen to the sound. Keep on listening to the sound till it disappears. What happens? You start, the, start with the sound and you feel this high sound. And when you listen, gradually the sound is disappearing. Gradually the sound is fading away. And if you keep on listening, then at a point you realize your mind naturally goes to the sound of silence. At the end of the sound, you drop into the silence. So what happened? You kept on observing this born thing, this born sound. And as a result, your mind naturally slips into the unborn, the sound of silence. Then let's say you notice so many thoughts. And they say if you can jump in between two thoughts, then you are, you slip into the Unborn, your all problems resolved. But what happens? It is difficult to jump between in between two thoughts. It's difficult to jump because your mind is bouncing back. You listen, you try and listen to the sound of silence. You can't do that. What happens? Your mind is bouncing back. You sit and try to observe the gap in between two breaths. Your mind is bouncing back. You can't directly go to the unborn. What you have to do is that you observe the born nature. And naturally, as a result, your mind slips into the unborn. That's what happens. So when you keep on observing, you can realize that there are gaps in between thoughts. When you keep on observing, you feel that there is silence in between signs, sounds. And you realize that there is a gap in between the breath. This is how gradually our mind is slipping into the unborn nature. That's the unborn nature Banke is talking about. He's saying you must see the unborn within. In your lifetime, you have to do this experiment. You haven't seen this nature within you. So you have to keep on practicing and see this unborn nature, experience this unborn nature. Why it is so important, we can, we will explain in a little bit. But you have to try and see this. You have to try and experience this. Let's say when you walk for a while, when you sit for a while, when you keep on practicing, one day you might come and say that things went out of your control. You might come and say you can't maintain your posture. You might come and say the walking becomes uncomfortable or sometimes uh, it is out of your control. You feel like the body is walking like a machine. You feel like that you are sitting, but you, are, you don't have any control. Your mind naturally slips into something 
unknown condition that that experience is common to regular practitioners they usually experience that you sit and 45 minutes later you suddenly wake up you couldn't remember the time in between and you keep on practicing you could feel that the, this nature is increasing improving within you what is happening now your mind is natural to this unborn nature your mind is naturally accepting this unborn nature it was there within you all this time but you didn't observe you didn't experience this nature through the practice we start to experience it little by little first we start to observe the born nature and with time naturally gradually your mind goes to the unborn nature even without experiencing the born nature how can you experience the unborn without judgment you have to keep an open mind that's the important thing mindfulness you are not judging you are not sorting things you are not saying good and bad instead you simply watch simply observe that attitude is important like a cctv camera like a third person view you observe that observation we will let you know about the born nature within you and keep on observing that born nature gradually your mind will slip into the unborn you realize 45 minutes of sitting you couldn't remember you remember sitting you remember waking up but afterwards you feel so relaxed afterwards you feel comfortable you feel like you had a good night's sleep your stress your difficulties your worries they have vanished what happens this is the comfort in the born nature unborn nature when you experience the unborn nature that the nature that we called about the born nature earlier we reminded about the born nature what is the nature of the born it is subjected to change and it will die at the end of the day but what is the nature of the unborn unborn is not subjected to change unborn doesn't die so that's the idea of the practice instead of this changing dying nature you go to this not changing not dying unborn nature whenever you are in unborn you are living forever you are one with the universe you are one with the nature that's why they say you have to experience this you have to experience this unborn nature within you in this very lifetime you have to do and when you do it you feel that you earlier your thought pattern was that you are a, you are this separate entity you have this separate self you have this separate existence that was your idea but now you are one with the universe you are a part of this nature and when you are part of that universe you don't have to worry about anything you don't have to plan anything it says nature doesn't hurry but nothing left undone everything is happening perfectly without your involvement as soon as you get involved you ruin things 
that is what you are doing ruining things but when you allow it to happen it is happening perfectly nothing left undone so this is the idea of the practice gradually instead of the born nature into instead of the changing dying nature we gradually accept this unborn nature within our mind when you accept that unborn nature there is no change in it when you experience that unborn nature there is no change there is no dying in it no change no dying what does it mean you don't have to feel any friction there you don't have to worry about anything there you don't have to create depression out of something because it is not, not subjected to change it is not subjected to dying so that's gradually you have to improve it in you gradually you have to experience this unborn nature within you and when you experience let's say just for few minutes when you experience it for hours you feel this comfort within you for hours you feel that there is this bliss within you there's bliss because you didn't you didn't receive anything and so there is bliss generated from that experience and that becomes your fuel that becomes the energy that drive you not the worrying energy not the anger not the lust not all other expectations and so do you know that there is this unchanging nature within me you experience this unborn within you and when you experience this unborn all your problems resolve that's why we they say jump between two thoughts and all your problems resolve plug into the sound of silence and all your problems resolve notice the gap in between two breaths and all your problems resolve you are one with the universe you are one with the nature that's the idea of the picture that we have used for the poster there is a baby in the womb but you can see the universe through it you can see the galaxies through it so we have this nature within us but you have to practice with effort for some time till you plug into this nature till you experience this unborn vitality so that's the idea for today you must experience the unborn vitality thank you for listening thank you very much bhante and much merits to uh, uh for uh, providing us uh, with uh, insight on such a, a unique topic uh, and a unique way to look at mindfulness now i will like i will like to invite uh, sonali to commence with the question and answer session for today thank you sonali thank you namanta avasarai bante um before i go into the question and answers and the reports um we will share with you for the ones who have just started and and for the ones who are experienced a refresher as well um the gu- guidelines that nisaran wanya has given us some um videos to help you with your walking meditation and sitting meditation as um shared on the slide here um once you have a um look at these two videos then you can start your own practice start with any amount of time and build it up to an hour is our recommendation and once you have done your walking and sitting meditation uh, send us a report um and um de- uh, detailing your experience with it and um send it via the google form given here or the email which is um, beginnersnv@gmail.com once you have sent them we will then 
present it to Bante um, and give his uh, get his guidance um, on your meditation. Um, I will now move on to the reports we have received today. We've received two reports. I will start with the first one. Walking meditation. Walked on a grassy area, noted uneven surface of the ground, the harder areas with less grass in contrast to the areas with taller grass, noted the wildflowers on the grass and mind instructing, avoiding damaging the flowers, and walking around them. Noted the cooler parts of feet and warmer areas on top of feet. Noted lifting, moving, placing of each foot. After half hour of walking, went to a paved area and noted movement of foot and it making contact with ground and when lifting the end of the contact. Walked for one hour. Sitting meditation. Watch breath as primary object, noted in and out breaths. The breaths were equal in length, warmer out breath, and after a short period disappeared. Noted body tilting to left and position adjusted three times. Thoughts noted to appear, some proliferation, but others noted as they arose and mind went back to breath. Mind calm and happy sat for 45 minutes. Daily mindfulness. On a long drive back, taking nearly five hours on a drive that would usually take two due to traffic, roadworks and diversions, noted mind stayed calm, seeing the positive side of things um, as it was not the rush hour, at least initially. Um, a nice sunny day was alone the session I would miss was being recorded, so would listen to an, uh, another time. Had food and water in the car, etc. Mind aware it was important not to be distracted and keep alert as unfamiliar roads. Aware the drive would eventually come to an end and that it would too pass. With much gratitude, Pante and organizers. End of report, Pante. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Now, let's think about a child when they are in a situation, when they are in a forest, when they are on road, they are so excited, right? So they, they, they go after every little thing. When they see wildflowers, they want to get them. When they hear a beautiful bird sound, they want to chase after that bird. Whatever the other things that they see, they usually go after that. So you see, a child, they are very curious. They have this energy. They are more present. But what happens when we grow up? We had that energy. We had that child-like nature within us. What happened to that? They were covered by all the ideas. They were covered by all the expectations. They were covered by all the worries. And you become this strange creature. Probably always checking your phone. Some people even, they, they, they are going on a hike or something, still they can't give up their phone. Or less checking, updating status. That's what they are doing. They go to a concert and they keep on recording the show on their phone. What's the purpose? They can get much better records from YouTube. But what's the purpose? They want to post this on their social media, suggesting people that we went to this concert. Show off. So that's how the adults are. You had this mindful mind, the present mind, 
as a child you had this energy as a child child you had this curious nature as a child but along the way somewhere you forgot all those things now when you become mindful again you become like a child you explore this child like nature now let's say a child stuck in a traffic they don't worry about it it's the adults that are that are worrying about the traffic if they have food if they have you know something to drink if they can you know uh, watch the surrounding they happy with it they keep on finding various things in the present moment in the surrounding so the practitioner they too accept this child like nature instead of worrying about your time plans instead of go arriving home instead of thinking about the things that you have to do tonight just let go and be there with the present moment it could be five hours still it's an opportunity for you to meditate in a in one side that usual resistance is there although you let go that resistance won't go easily right that usual resistance is there in the background still you have to let go again and again and be comfortable again and again you think that's fine i'll just enjoy the present moment for few hours that's fine i'll just enjoy the traffic but in the background that usual resistance is there right that adult nature is there it is again and again fighting the child like nature it is again and again saying that you have so many things planned for tonight you have to go home and do so many things so again and again we have to accept this present moment when you accept let's say you are on a hike your senses they even become more and more active usually we are totally dependent on our eyes that's the prominent sen- sense that we have and sense of sense of smell probably vanished almost vanished right but when you are mindful let's say you are on a hike through a forest you you start to feel the various smells probably smell of a flower probably smell of the forest probably the fungus that surround you so you start to get so many variety of smells there when you pay attention to the present moment your senses become more and more active your senses become energized and you start to feel things that you usually overlook you start to smell the flowers you start to smell the forest you start to smell the rain so those things naturally come to you when you are attentive when you pay attention just that open mind is necessary when you have that open mind you hear a whole lot of new sounds when you are in a forest you can feel at times you can hear so many birds so many insects creating various various different sounds so beautiful again and again they are like like this orchestra playing variety of sound so when you attend to you you welcome these things now let's say in this forest on a rainy day you can hear the frogs singing they start their songs probably around 4 pm they start then for about 2 or 3 hours they continue keep on singing 
that's their mating calls. But that sound is very nice. And probably 50, 60, few hundred frogs, they get together, they start their orchestra. And then come the insects, probably towards the, let's say around 6, 7, probably around 6 p.m., they start their music. Then throughout the night, they, they play their orchestra. Then early in the morning, the birds, they start. Right? Probably the, after like 4.35, they start their, their songs. They start their orchestra. Then probably towards 5.30 or so, the monkeys join them. Right? So that's how the day is. When you don't have so many worrying thoughts, when you don't have so many plans, when you don't have so many expectations, you simply wake up to these things in the present moment. You feel like that nature is singing for you. Nature is playing this orchestra for you. So beautiful, unique type of music. Then when you attend to you, you feel the smell of a flower. You identify the color of it. Earlier you identified it from memory, not from seeing. You know this is red color. That's your idea. But when you go closer, you realize it is not completely red. And so there is this brown color mixed to it. So that's the magic of the attention. That's the magic in the present moment. You could be living in a forest. You could be stuck in traffic. But still, you can notice these things. You can notice the sound of the vehicles. You can notice how the thoughts are created. You can notice the surrounding forms, surrounding parts, and probably the people who are walking. So that attentiveness we try to develop, that openness we try to develop. When you are open, when your mind is present, you start to feel these tiny, tiny things, so many things that you kept on overlooking. So many sounds in the surrounding, so many smells, so many sensations in your body, so many beautiful sights. That's the magic of the present moment. And you become like a child. You develop this childlike energy. You are curious like a child. That nature you had in the beginning, but somehow along the way, you forgot it. Now again, as an adult, you start practicing, you start appreciating this childlike nature and through the practice, you can develop that energy. So thank you for listening. Thank you for presenting your report. And as you mentioned, when you are present, you start to appreciate these little, little things. You start to feel these little, little things in the present moment and even stuck in traffic. For five hours, still, it feels like meditation. It feels like you can practice among these hours. So that's the way. Keep on practicing. Whenever you feel resistance, that's an opportunity for you to practice. Not only while walking, not only while sitting, not only during the formal meditation, but in your day-to-day -day life. As soon as you feel this resistance, that's an opportunity to practice. So continue practicing. Thank you, Bhante. Um, I will move on to the next report. Um, again, by an adult. Mindful sitting. Sat on the cushion. A quick body scan took place. When breath appeared, it was felt across the upper body, around nostrils, chest movement, and rise and fall of stomach. Mind stayed within the breath for a while. Some thoughts arose and fell away. 
This was noted few times in the session. There seems to be no interest in the mind for storytelling with thoughts that came up. No sounds noted and felt everything sinking into the silence. Calmness noted. Breath had become subtle now. Sat for one hour. Um, informal walking. Took the opportunity to be mindful during a daily exercise walk. Steps were quicker and yet noted the lifting and placing of feet. Walked in the nearby woods. Temperature difference noted. Heat of sun on skin coming out of house and cool shade on the skin walking under the trees noted. The heartbeat which was prominent, it was peaceful walking among big trees. Feet movement were taking place almost automatically now. Attention would move between calm, cool sensation of the sh shade, movements of the body, and noticing the feet movement. Walk for 45 minutes. Mindfulness during the day. There was an event this week involving a neighbor who says she is lonely but seems not to know how, how to form friendships. She has been fired from multiple jobs for um, invading boundaries. She keeps asking me to introduce my friends to her. I felt slightly, slightly uncomfortable feeling in the gut, but didn't pay much, much attention to this feeling. Next time friends came for a coffee morning, I invited the neighbor too because I felt sorry. I thought it was it had all been gone fine. However, the neighbor had exchanged contact numbers with my friends and have been contacting them, asking them to take her to the same exercise class I go with other friends. Then the neighbor invited my friends to her place for a coffee. Friends informed me of this and asked me if I was coming too. They were confused I had also um, as I had also invited these friends to mine the same morning. It all felt awkward. Annoyance and irritation arose towards the neighbor. The mindfulness arose in the next instance. Option of using Wu Wei appeared. Part of the mind um, knew that this awkward situation shall also pass. Another part of the mind, which also like a childish part, wanted to kick up a fuss about intentionally didn't say anything, anyone apart from, uh, intentionally didn't say anything to anyone apart from the Kalyanamittas, who I practiced Dhamma with. She helped me notice the uh, level of uh, attachment, ownership, um, and I, me, and mine being active in myself within the situation. That awareness coupled with the demonstration, determination not to be bad, not to badmouth anyone, helped me take, it, take time to find a way forward. Wu Wei practice was effective. It was resolved in a simple manner. Just to inform the neighbor that my friends are coming to mind that day and for her to drop in as well. What I learned about myself this, with this was how I feel when social norms are not respected, nor when social boundaries are broken. Level of attachment in the mind, also the ability to actually not react in unhealthy ways, which comes more easily due to the mindfulness practice. And by giving time, um, to understand the situation, notice my mental reactions, and just taking time to find healthy solutions. This may need ongoing management, but I also feel empathy towards the lonely person. Dear Bhante, look forward to your feedback. Much merit to you and the organizers. End of report. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Let's start with, uh, now you mentioned about mindful sitting and mindful walking. Now, if you think the practice is important, you can create time. That's the idea. Now, that exercise walk, why anyway doing? Right? So why not be mindful during that time? Do it like a mindful walk. You notice the nature much better. You feel the body much better. And it helps. You do the exercising as well as you feel much better afterwards because of the practice. So that's why we have to again and again mention if you say you don't have time, in a way you are saying it's not important. That's the idea of it. So let's say you sit early in the morning. 30-40 minutes of mindful sitting. 
that's how you start your day and when you sacrifice that 30 40 minutes for the practice when you allow your mind to clear its thoughts during this time, then you realize throughout the day, probably till lunchtime, you feel this bliss in you. You feel that you are comfortable in your body and mind. Otherwise, let's say you wake up late, you rush into your office, you do, do so many things in a hurry. What's the status of your mind when you arrive at your workplace? And with that status, you continue to keep on doing your things. So what happens to your efficiency? We don't think about these things. Efficiency matters. You can do certain, certain things for five, six hours. And somebody else with higher efficiency, they can do it within two hours. So this attitude, this calm and composed mind is very important. That's why we say start your day, get prepared for your day with a sitting session. Try it for a few weeks and see the difference it makes. See how wise choices you make due to the practice. Somebody was saying a few, few weeks, weeks back, when I practiced early in the morning, I noticed that throughout the day, I make wise choices. And when I skip my practice, I feel like that day, I am creating more and more trouble. In a way, I am stupid. I am making stupid choices. Why is that? And somebody come and uh, blame you for something, suddenly you get this reaction. Why is that? Your mind is not calm and composed. You are not ready for that situation. So that's what happens. That's why if you think the practice is important, you can create time. That is important. At least start with 20-30 minutes of sitting, 20-30 minutes of walking, and continue with your practice. When you do it, then you realize various situations appear. Now, this is a good example. Your neighbor, they are lonely. They don't have friends. What is the reason that they don't have friends in the first place? This is the exact reason. The reason that you are explaining later, that's the reason. They try to find shortcuts in life. They try to find various, they try to do various things and they try to win people. Can you make friends with somebody forcefully? That's not possible. Friendship is developed naturally. You have to, you can't be fake. If you are fake, then that friendship will last so long. You don't, you can't chase after friends. You can create friends. Instead, what you have to do, you have to be yourself. Naturally, people with similar vibration, they will come to you. And people with different vibrations, they will leave you. That's the simple idea. What you have to do, you have to be yourself. That's all. So this person is trying to create friends. Can we do it? No. That's not how it works. That's why she is lonely. She is alone in the first place. So these are good experiences. This is how we say you are making wise choices. Now you could fight this situation. Easily you could fight. You can tell your friends not to come. You can blame that person. All those things you can do. What's the, what's the outcome by doing all these things? 
Wu Wei is the way. Be like water. Right? And there's obstacle. The water doesn't go fighting it. Instead, it will work around that obstacle. That's how you have to do. Even your friends, let them realize on their own. Tell them to go and enjoy their party next door. And within a week, they'll come and say, that person is really bad. We won't go and see them again. So that's how the world works. Otherwise, you try to explain them, you try to, you know, save them. That's not how it works. You have to let them learn the hard way. Let them make mistakes and learn. That's a much better way. And with the in between, it feels like watching an accident that's about to happen. Right? How much fun that is. Watching an accident that's about to happen, you know that there, there will be an accident. It hasn't happened yet. But you are attentive. You simply watch with a smile, with a calm mind. You keep on watching. One person coming this way, then the other person coming this way, and they meet in the middle, and they create this huge pass. That's how it is. So fun if you can take that third person view and watch. If you get involved, then it creates trouble. It creates friction. So that's the basic idea of Wu Wei. You just take this third person view and you simply watch. You simply watch. Things are happening around you, but you don't have to get involved. You know that they are going and doing something wrong, but you allow them to do it. It's so fun if you can do it. But what happens is that you want to interfere. You want to instruct them. You want to behave them. That's the issue. So some people, they are, they are coming and, you know, opening the salt bottle instead of the sugar. Right? And they are making a tea out of it. So can you simply watch? No, you have to interfere. You have to tell them, no, no, that's not sugar. That's salt. No, allow them to realize that. They come and they mix the salt, few, few, few spoons, and they do the tea. And when they drink, they realize it's not sugar, definitely. <laughs> so allow them to realize that. That way, if you can do, then that's the least fictional part. Whatever doing is involved, there's friction. And there's this opportunity for you to conquer the situation when you behave right. Sometimes they come and say, I made this mistake. Then you can give some input. That is why we say Wu Wei, it's, it's acting, but in the proper time. Not forcing. You wait till the proper time. You dance with adversity. That's a judo term. You dance with adversity. You dance with your opponent. Why you dance? Did you get the right moment? Till your opponent is off balance. That's your opportunity. When your opponent is off balance, if you don't act, then that's stupid. That's foolish. You wait till the proper moment. When your opponent is off balance, you act. With full force, you act. So that's how you do. You wait people to realize then you can give them an idea. This is how you should do. Let them make mistakes and then you can teach them. Then you can give them an idea. Not with friction, not with forcing, but when they are open. So that's how you have to live this life. That is the most efficient way. All the other doing, all the other acting, they'll create so much friction. Look at the world. That's what's happening. Most people, they are forcefully doing things. It's not right. 
Instead, you have to allow it, it to mature. You have to wait till the right time. But you keep on absorb, right? applying force. You are not, you have not given up. Be like water, they say. Water is always there. Water is attentive. Till it gets the right opportunity, it is there. It is applying pressure. Right? When the time is right, it is acting. It is applying force and doing, finding its path. So that's the idea. So you wait patiently. You allow they, them to make mistakes. You allow them to realize their own. And then you can act. That balance, if you can find, then it will create a huge difference in your life. We don't know when to act. Some people, they have given up. Some people, they apply too much force. Always forcing, always forceful. But we are in the middle. We have not given up, definitely. But we are not always applying force. We are not powering through. Instead, we are attentive. We wait till the proper moment. If you allow them to learn the hard way, if you allow them to realize their own mistake, then it's much easier to uh, tell them the right path, show them the right path. So that's how you have to do with least friction you can function. And even for the neighbor, maybe you should introduce the friend who is mindfulness, the friend in your own mind, not in the outside world, in your own mind. When you are friendly with yourself, you naturally become friendly with the outside world. What happens to most people is that they hate themselves. So how can they make friends outside? This person who is there all the time, 24-7, you are with that person, yourself, but you are hating that person. So how can you find friends in the outside world? That's what has happened to most of the people. They are hating themselves. They are not friendly with themselves. So how can they find friends in the outside world? They can find only for a few weeks, few days. So first, you have to be friendly with yourself. How to be friendly with yourself? Just sit for a while. Do nothing and sit. Can you stay 20 minutes? Being friendly with yourself? Just walk. You, for the sake of walking, you are walking. Can you be friendly with yourself? Stay for 20 minutes? That's a challenge for most of the people. They don't like to stay with themselves. They hate themselves so much, they want to run away. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing once again. Thank you for sharing. And we will see how the things are going to turn out. Thank you, Vante. And thank you once again to the report writers. We are, uh, or we can all relate to something very similar to um, most of these situations in our lives as well. So thank you for sharing. Um, unfortunately, we've run out of time for questions again. If anyone has, maybe we can allow one question. Um, otherwise, we will have to um, make it another day. No, no, no one has, has put their hand up, so I will um, end this session and give, give it hand you over to Namanta. Thank you very much, Merit uh, Sonali, and also much merits to Bhante, and thank you, Bhante, for uh, such wonderful explanations. Uh, we will be facing a uh, uh, diverse set of experiences in throughout life, and mindfulness in um, uh, trained in this manner will definitely help you. And the reports are witness to that, uh, and also much merits to all those who uh, sent those reports. Thank you. Um, next, uh, I think we uh, have come to the conclusion of this program for today. I would like to uh, mention with much respect uh, Venerable Bhante Dhammakusala Thero's contribution to today's program, and wish these merits will uh, have a 
positive knock on effect on bhante so on progress in the journey of mindfulness and i would also like to mention with much respect to most honorable bhante udai rekum dhamaji mahateru who is the chief abbot of the nisarane forest monastery who has requested this program to be initiated um and we are seeing the benefits now so i wish these merits will pass on to chief bhante and also other bhantes uh, and monks at the monastery so that they will achieve great uh, states of mindful practice furthermore i would like to mention with uh, uh thankfulness the wonderful team of uh, organizers who are behind this uh, program who have initiated this program and who are continuously supporting in multiple ways uh, to run the program in such a way that you can absorb these concepts and uh, keep on training them uh, training with these concepts um uh in a very easy uh, in an easy format so much best to them and hope their own improvements take place in their mindfulness practices furthermore i would like to also thank all of you who joined through zoom and also through the live stream uh we thereby providing us with the justification uh to run this program continuously i hope this merits will also have a knock on, positive knock on effect on your own practice so uh, with that i would like to mention that the program is scheduled to be held same time same saturday as well and i would um, wish you all a happy and mindful week ahead and uh, reminding that you can practice this uh, 24/7 which is something i try to do so you can try to practice this and uh, hope that you succeed as per the reports and also the insights we learned uh, we went through today so uh, with that i will uh, end the zoom session for now and hope to see you next saturday at the same time thank you so much and have a pleasant week ahead